And the Oscar goes to Daniel Day-Lewis. And the Oscar goes to Leonardo DiCaprio. And the Oscar goes to Joaquin Phoenix Joker. On April 26th, five men will square off at the Oscar for Best Actor. Only one among them is going to win the gold. The past two decades, we have seen a wide variety of performances claim this prestigious prize. Everyone from French comic actors to veteran American stars, newcomers to established Hollywood actors. Some of these performances seem guaranteed to stand the test of time. So in honor of this year's Academy Awards, we wanted to look back at the 10 Best Actor Oscar winners of the 21st century. Today's list number 10 goes to Colin Firth for his performance in the movie The King's Speech, a tasteful period drama that draws its empathy from Firth's modest, big-hearted performance as King George VI, who in 1936 ascended to the throne and finally confront a weakening speech disorder. An actor known for playing characters full of charm and impeccable gentility, Firth always lets us feel the weight of the crown that lays heavy on his character's shoulder. Rarely has lack of confidence been so deeply likable. What was your earliest memory? I'm not here to discuss personal matters. Well, why are you here then? Because I bloody well stammer! But do you know any jokes? Timing isn't my strong suit. <laughs> Number 9 goes to Matthew McConaughey. Speaking of physical transformations, Matthew McConaughey rejected prosthetics or digital effects for John Mark Valley's gritty AIDS drama film, Dallas Buyers Club. McConaughey portrayed character of an AIDS patient who smuggled unapproved drugs into Texas for distribution. As Ron Woodruff, McConaughey honors the man's principal refusal to get all cuddly and inspirational just because he is dying. Mr. Woodruff, you've tested positive for HIV. Have you ever used intravenous drugs? Have you ever engaged in homosexual conduct? Homo, homo. Did you say homo? You made a mistake. Mm -hmm. That ain't me. Mr. Woodruff, we estimate you have 30 days left. Matthew McConaughey, who, for most his career, was not part of any Oscar conversation. But starting with 2011's The Lincoln Lawyer, the actor said goodbye to his beach bum rom-com stick and started doing more thoughtful work, culminating in award-winning turn as a Texas homophobe. Russell Crowe, who had earned a lot of praise for his previous dramatic roles in LA Confidential and The Insider, brought gravitas and heart to his character Maximus in the movie Gladiator, for which he won the Oscar for Best Actor. The Gladiator, as an honorable Roman general who must defeat the troublesome young emperor, played by Joaquin Phoenix, who exiled him to a life in the cutthroat world of the killer to be killed arena. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions. Loyal servant to the true Emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Father to a murdered son. Husband to a murdered wife. And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Russell Crowe's Maximus brings down a corrupt leader and in the process the Australian actor earned his place among the new generation of superstars. After Roman Polanski's Holocaust drama film The Pianist, Adrian Brody was a star, becoming the youngest Best Actor winner ever at the age of 29. His character in The Pianist as Wadislaw Spielmann, a Polish Jew whose life as a respected pianist is destroyed once the Nazis invade his homeland. His character's simple need to survive transformed into an act of heroic defiance in the face of unimaginable atrocity. Number 6 goes to Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant. Leonardo DiCaprio has given a number of Oscar-worthy performances in the movies like The Wolf of Wall Street or Django Unchained or Catch Me If You Can. But he never won the Oscar after nominated several times. He won his long-awaited Oscar for Best Actor for The Revenant in 2015. It's a story of Hugh Glass, a legendary frontiersman who severely injured in a beer attack and is abandoned by his hunting crew. He uses his skill to survive and take revenge on his companion who betrayed him. The film is less performance and more physically put through on camera. Leonardo DiCaprio is one of our best living actors and he put himself through the ringer for this film. Number 5 goes to Casey Affleck for his performance in the movie Manchester by the Sea. Grief is an emotion that's hard to manifest on screen. What Casey Affleck does in Kenneth Lonergan's excellent drama film Manchester by the Sea is both unexpected and deeply human. Story of a man who cannot bear to forgive himself for one grave mistake and it's dictated his entire life 
ever since. There is an unceasing pain underneath and no matter how close he seems to come to the surface, he can't stop himself from drowning. It's one of the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching performances to ever win an Oscar. And for once, the Academy recognized the subtlety often even more impressive than big emotions. On number 4, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. Whatever you think about Joker, it's impossible to deny that Joaquin Phoenix is excellent in it. Mentally, physically, emotionally, Phoenix fully inhabits this role and commits to Arthur Fleck's story arc that eventually turns him into the Joker. It's a turn tragic and sickening and further shows the depths to which Phoenix will go for a role. Heath Ledger will forever be most everyone's ideal Joker. Unknowable, terrifying, endlessly fascinating, but Phoenix conveys all the pain that turns an ordinary man into super villain. But you're awful, Murray. Me? I'm awful? Oh yeah, how am I awful? Playing my video. Inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. You're just like the rest of them. There are riots out there. Two policemen are in critical condition. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing. Someone was killed today because of what you did. I know. Number 3 goes to Philip Seymour Hoffman for the movie Capote. Philip Seymour Hoffman's death in 2014 shocked the entire world. It still hurts to remember that Philip Seymour Hoffman is gone, knowing he had so many more incredible performances to give us. He won an Oscar for his role as Truman Capote in movie Capote. Disappearing into the role while bringing a sense of empathy to the iconic writer as the film chronicles the writing of In Cold Blood. The range of this man to go from something like Boogie Nights to the master, to the capote, will all wildly different performances, all brilliant in their own way. Most people know that Daniel Day Lewis initially turned down Steven Spielberg's request that he plays America's 16th president, sending the director a letter praising the brilliance of Lincoln's script, but feeling that he can only do this work if he feels almost as if there is no choice. Thankfully, he changed his mind. Day Lewis embodies Lincoln's intelligence and stateliness, but the performance reveals more how this shy, slightly silly, unbendingly resolute president, wild at charm, intimidation, smarts, and patriotism to bring an end to the civil war while securing enough votes to pass the 13th Amendment. Any of you or anyone else knows it, I know I need this. This amendment is that cure to the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment. Now, now, now. It took foreign-born actor to reveal the best of the American character. Daniel Day Lewis Oscar for this role made him only man ever to win three Best Actor Academy Awards. And number one actor of this list also goes to Daniel Day Lewis, the great actor of all time, the great actor of this century, for playing the character of Daniel Plainview in There Will Be Blood. To prepare to play Daniel Plainview, Day Lewis studied Dust Bowl era audio recordings as well as tapes of actor director John Huston. From those sources and others, he crafted the character of Daniel Plainview. Daniel Plainview is brilliant, despicable, craven human being who is the embodiment of American capitalism and what make Day Lewis performance so phenomenal is you both absolutely dislike him and yet are still kind of rooting him to succeed. If you have a milkshake and I have a milkshake and I have a straw, there it is, that's a straw, you see, you watch it. My straw reaches across the room and starts to drink your milkshake. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Paul Thomas Anderson's There Will Be Blood is a dense picture packed with complicated emotions and distressing themes. But Day Lewis is its beating black heart. That is all for today. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. And thanks for watching this video.